if you're on Huzo with us right now, you can click on the shop button and order that. I wanted to come to you today and talk about something that uh, has been a discussion of mine for the last several months. And in fact, I had a conversation this morning with one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Clark, where we were talking about the 40-hour work week. Now, my uh, take on this is that the 40-hour work week is going away. Now, if you are an old school guy like I am, you've been around business for a while, you're thinking 40 hours a week, man, that's been around for a long time. How do we change that? Well, here's the thing. The 40-hour work week was actually a product of the 19th century. And in fact, Henry Ford and the Ford Motor Company actually gets a lot of the blame for the 40-hour work week because Henry Ford was trying to do something kind to his workers. And actually, he came out and said that if your employees work too much, they're useless. So he came out with this idea of we're going to limit the amount of time that our workers actually work on the assembly line per week. So he capped that at a 40-hour work week. So this is a 19th century idea that has flowed well into the 21st century. But here's the problem that we're running into. Organizations are now more dispersed. They are pushed out. Uh, we are global organizations. We find ourselves uh, doing business all over the place. In fact, uh, I am located outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, and I do a lot of business from this very seat right here globally via Skype, Google Hangouts, and doing live recordings like this, which will end up on YouTube. So I'm a dispersed uh, worker. I'm a cloud worker is, is what I like to define them as. And so the 40-hour work week no longer really works if you're, if you're operating in a 24-7 environment of a global environment. So what we're finding is also that organizations have determined that flexibility in hours is much better for the workers. In fact, what we're finding out is that workers uh, that are given flexibility in their work, not just in their work, but also in the hours that they work, uh, they are more productive. And an interesting byproduct of this is that workers are actually told, go home, go on vacation, unplug. So you would think, that there would be a lot of abuse coming out of this move to um, less hours and more flexibility in their hours. And what we're also finding is that companies are experimenting with the idea of doing away with paid time off, uh, sick leave and those type of things. And they're basically saying, if you need time off, take it. If you need to be sick, take it. If your kid is sick, take the time off. Just don't there's no calculation. They're not sitting there checking off a list saying, oh, uh, Mr. Smith or, or Sally uh, Smith has been out for 170 days. In fact, what we're finding is that organizations that have done away with PTO and sick leave and everything, there is a higher rate of participation in the workforce. In other words, there's a lower rate of employees taking sick time off, uh, taking leave and, and, that, and the like. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, a lot of times we're finding that organizations are going to the employees and saying, you must take the time off. So um, if you do a simple Google search, 40-hour uh, work week, what you're going to find is article after article after article from Forbes to Inc. to, to um, um, Wired and all of these different um, magazines and, and uh, Huffington Post and the BBC. I mean, it's global where there's this conversation going on right now about doing away with the 40-hour work week. So there is a, a lot of psychological change that has to happen at the corporate level. This isn't just something that you snap your fingers and the next day you do it. I mean, this is something you have to communicate, you have to prepare for, you have to explain, and you can't just give it to them and then take it away. So if you're going to give them um, flexibility in their work schedules, flexibility in the time that they work, um, flexibility in the time that they take off for sick leave, uh, family leave, and, and vacation and the like, you can't take it from them because the psychological damage uh, from a culture standpoint is far worse if you give them something and take it away because it failed uh, so you want to make sure that when you go into this, that you've well thought through the change process, that you've well communicated the change process, and that you have in place 
a from the top of the hierarchy to the bottom uh, a buy-in on this new idea. Now, here's something else that's interesting. Organizations that are engaged in this type of uh, process where they're doing away with a set work day or work hours, rather, when the employee takes vacation, many of these organizations are telling them to leave their technology at home, leave it in the room, turn it off, do not check email while you're on vacation. And there are some organizations that are actually shutting off their um, email servers at certain times of the day so that there can be time for uh, getting things done. So there are many different ideas out there on how to approach this. Here's the thing that I uh, like to uh, talk about. Now, when I wrote my book, The Open Organization, I wrote this as a template. Okay, this is not a one size fits all approach to business. And when you look at this idea of doing away with work hours or a workday hour set, you need to understand that this is not a one size fits all approach. You have to do what's right for you and your culture. You cannot just say, oh, let's do it because XYZ company is doing it. No, you have to look at your culture and figure out what's going to work for you. Are there going to be abuses? Of course, there's going to be abuses. Unfortunately, that, that's going to happen. But here's what I've learned about organizations that deal with um, employees that are uh, being abusive with uh, benefits like this. Those employees don't last very long. They get pushed out. Um, certainly, there are rules and regulation laws that, that deal with uh, how we can hire and fire people. And, and some people work in a, a right to hire, right to fire state or right to work state. So there's many different rules and regulations that we have to be sure that we check out from an HR standpoint and a legal standpoint on how we hire and fire. But the bottom line is what we're trying to do is create an environment that is more conducive to productivity and happiness from the employee, from the worker. So this idea of uh, having less hours than 40 hour work week uh, is a great one. And sometimes we have to work at different hour sets. So if we're in a global setting and let's say um, I have a team that's distributed around the world, uh, we might having, might, I might be meeting early morning, which might be afternoon or evening for someone else in another part of the world. But the next time we have a meeting, I might be meeting in the evening and they're having to get up early or stay up late in order to have that. So there's this give and take for the, from the entire team. The entire team has to buy into this concept of um, you know being flexible in that way. Sometimes you just have to miss a meeting too. And so there's a need for uh, these video meetings to take place and there be a recording of it that's archived in what I call a knowledge commons or an archive that, the, that you can go back and, and check that information out. So the 40 hour week, work week is, is a dying um, dinosaur. It, it is going extinct, I think. I think that we are probably 10 years away from not really needing a 40 hour work week for the most part. Now, let me just say this. Do I think that it's going away 100%? Probably not. There are some organizations, some businesses and industries where we probably are not ready to do less than 40 hours. Let me just give you an example. Uh, law enforcement, um, the fire department, um, EMS, medicine, the military, obviously, uh, is a 24-7 organization. So there are some situations, government agencies, service industries, um, there are some instances where we probably can't do away with long hour sets that, that people are working. But there are other trade-offs to that. Maybe you say, I can only work uh, 10 hours today and five hours tomorrow, as long as you're working a number of hours that are for the productivity of, of the situation. So how do we change pay? That's another thing. We In this scenario, we're having to move away from hourly wages. So this assumes that we have some sort of um, pay for project or, or pay per quarter or pay per um, results. I mean, there, there are many different ways that we move uh, the idea of getting paid. I think we're going to move more to a pay per project situation uh, where you're, you're uh, getting paid for the stuff that you're producing. So that means also uh, some other things like um, probably more of a freelancer economy that's coming. And that's why we're probably going to see 
um, the death of the 40 hour work week the most. So consultants and freelancers, the gig economy um, will probably be the one that nails one of the nails in the coffin of the 40 hour work week. And I do think by the year 2025 that we are on track for half of the working population to be um, consultants. And so those people that are actually in work, uh, active work will probably be uh, part-time in the way of consultant. So that means that they are self-employed. So by the year 2030 to 2040, somewhere in that neighborhood, we're looking at 30% of the population that's working is in full-time work. Now, those individuals that are in that 30% set probably are going to be the majority of them that work a 40-hour work week. And so we're, we're back to that talking about medicine and, and services, uh, social services and things like that. So anyhow, this is a really interesting conversation to have. Um, I would love to hear from you and uh, learn more about uh, what your thoughts are on this. Uh, sorry for the alarm going off. Um, these things happen. I'd love to hear from you. You can go to my website at MaximumChange.com. Check out my blog there. You can also find a blog at MaximumChange.wordpress.com uh, where I try to keep up to date. Um, you can order my book on Amazon. Uh, the Open Organization, it's the second edition, and it's a, a softback book um, that is now available and shipping. So you can check that out if, you, uh, go to, if you're on huza.io slash maximum change and you want to order my book there, you can. Uh, I believe that's uh, at readily available through that. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Maximum Change. This video will also appear on YouTube. Uh, and so you can look me up on YouTube at Maximum Change TV. Would love to hear from you. Um, please reach out to me. Tell me what you think about this uh, idea of the 40-hour work week going away. And uh, hey, have a great day. And uh, hopefully you'll be one of the uh, amazing people that gets to move into the flex economy. So, so have a great day.